Restoring old photos is one of the more satisfying things to do in Photoshop and at some point it's quite likely that you'll have the need to do this either for your own photos or for those of someone else's. Here we have a badly damaged photo of a little boy and we're going to actually remove all of the damage from this and make it look like a brand new picture. To begin a restore, always duplicate your background layer. This way you can work on your double copy and be able to turn that copy on and off to see the original. I would name this layer Restore or Fixed or something along that line so you know what it is. Let's begin up in the top left hand corner. The Content Aware tools that I'm about to show you were introduced, I believe, in CS5. If you're working with a version that is older than that, you'll actually want to skip to the video about cloning and patching because that's how you're going to have to do all of your repairs. Um, if you're, um, I would actually recommend, if you haven't done it already, going to Photoshop's website and downloading the free 30-day trial to do this, it's it'll convince you that you never want to go back once you've used some of these amazing tools. So let's get started on removing this type. The first thing we want to do with this is select everything we want to remove, but it's kind of a scattered piece so I know that my wand tool and some of my other quick selection tools won't work very well. What will work is the color range selection. To focus on just this area, I'm going to select it with my rectangular marquee tool with the feathering set to zero. Once I have that area selected, I go to the select menu and choose color range. Eyedropper, part of the letter, and you'll see it appear in white in this black box below, and increase the fuzziness until you see those layer, uh, letters quite clearly, but stop before you see any of the background start to come through and then click OK. This will select the darkest areas of this type. If we zoom in really close, however, you'll notice that yes, we do have the darkest areas selected, but there's still some of those little anti-aliasing bits outside of that. For the tool that I'm about to show you to work, the Content Aware Fill, you need to have all of that selected. Now the easiest way I know to do that is to make your first selection like I just did and then go to the select menu, choose modify, and expand. And just looking at this, it's one or two pixels, so I'm going to enter in two pixels and hit OK. And then zoom back so I can see this amazing tool work. Now when this was introduced, just so you have an idea, it was a little bit like your fairy godmother showing up and giving you her magic wand instead of just a couple of wishes. Okay, so once you have it selected, you're on the layer you want to affect, go to Edit Menu and choose Fill. In the Use area, which is normally set to Foreground Color, change it to Content Aware and make sure Opacity is up at 100% and then click OK. It'll think for a moment and then do its magic. So hit Command D or Deselect to see what happened it is completely gone. Not only is it gone, it actually didn't leave a blurry mess behind it. What that tool did is it looked at the area around it, found the patterning, copied the texture in, adjusted the lighting and color, and then blended it all together. And it's a pretty incredible tool. It's not great for everything, but it is good for taking type out of a picture. It's actually pretty good for taking that photo bomber that was in the back of your, you know, high school dance picture that you want to get out of there. That sort of thing it's really good at. The next content aware tool that is pretty amazing is the patch tool. Now the patch tool is hidden under the spot healing brush which is right below the eyedropper tool in your toolbox. So grab the patch tool. This one also works by selecting an area first. So I'm going to come into this little cut part of the picture at the top of the baby's head and I'm switching back and forth between my space bar to hold down the hand, my zoom tool with Z so I can zoom in, and then hitting J to get my patch tool. Now that's what I'm doing. You can certainly come back over to the panel to get the tool that you need.
So this one works also by selecting. So you click and you drag to select the area that you want to affect and then click inside that selection and move it to an area of similar detail and color and let go and then deselect command D. So just like that content aware fill, it filled in the area. The difference with the content aware fill and the patch tool is you get to determine where it's pulling that information from. So let's do that for a couple of these spots. I'm going to select it around and drag it, select around and drag it, and deselect. That's pretty cool. It cleared up that area very nicely. But just to show you how truly powerful this area is, move down to this really awful tear through the baby's cheek that's got yellow tape and all of that. Make a selection in the large area of the baby's cheek, staying away from areas of high shadow detail. Once you've made that selection, click and drag it up to the newly cleared skin on the baby's forehead and let go. <laughs> Hit Command D to deselect and take a look at that magic. Isn't that incredible? So needless to say, the whole world of photo restoration people just rejoiced like mad when this tool was introduced. And I am working in CS6. I also at work, I work in Photoshop CC 2014, which is the latest. And this tool just gets better with each version. However, what this tool is not good at is restoring areas of high detail. So, for example, here on this baby's ear, if I grab my patch tool and select this area where the ear line kind of intersects with this wrinkle and dragged it over, what I end up with is a muddy area because it didn't preserve the original detail it tried to copy in from where I told it to. So if you undo Command-Z, Command-Option-Z, to step back and then deselect Command D. You will find as you work with it that it works best for large areas. The other thing you want to watch out for is areas where it goes from being dark to light. So I don't exactly have a damaged area to de uh, demonstrate this so I'm just going to move in here where this dark line of the baby's hair meets the white blanket. Hitting J to grab my patch tool I'm going to create a selection, not actually go into the dark area, but right up against it. And then when I click and drag, you'll notice that it bled color from that dark area in. So when you're using this tool, and in fact using any of the other content aware tools, watch out for dark areas that, uh, or changes in color. Just know that it will muddy that area. The same is true for the edges of the image most times. So if I select this area at the very edge and click and drag it inside, it will work to some extent, but it will still create kind of a blurry area around the edge. So typically what I'll do is just stop just a tiny bit short of the edge and work my way around that way and then come back with a different tool that we'll get to in just a bit to fix that. So this is great. This is really a useful tool and uh, you'll do more with it, but I'm also going to introduce the spot heal touch. That's not what it's called. What is it called? The spot healing brush tool. Click on your patch, hold down, and then choose the top one that looks like a band-aid. This one is pretty much the same sort of tool just in the form of a brush. And you can change the size with your left and right bracket keys. If you right click, you'll find the same um, controls or most of the same controls as you would for a normal brush, such as the hardness of edge. For me, I use the option control click drag option because that lets me affect the size as well as the edge. So I'm going to make this a little bit on the small side and move down to where I have a whole bunch of grungy mess on this little boy's arm or little baby's arm. I guess I don't know if it's a boy or girl. This tool works by just clicking. You can single click or you can brush an area. Just know that the larger area you brush, the longer your computer will take to solve that. And if you brush again over an area of detail, it will become mismatched and muddy. So stay away from edges, stay away from areas of high detail, 
but this is great for zapping little areas and you'll see later in when we're actually retouching a model's photo that it's really great for clearing up skin blemishes so you can see this is again another really powerful content aware tool so those are the content aware tools that are extremely powerful and very exciting to use what I would like you to do before the next video is go through this picture and take care of as much as you can with these couple of tools the patch tool and the spot healing brush tool stay away from detailed areas like inside this baby's eye across his ear or where um, it hits the edge of something you can still address areas like this with your patch tool which I'll switch back to for a moment sometimes you just have to make a smaller selection and move it within an area of detail that you want it to adjust to what you do want to try and avoid with all of these tools is creating like I said either a blurry mess or repetitive pattern let me show you what I mean in fact in the lace it's probably a good place to do that if I grab my patch tool and select this area and drag it to an area immediately to the left and then maybe again what I end up with is that same pattern repeating it's not terribly notice noticeable there but you will find areas that it is noticeable in in fact as I zoom out I can kind of see that pattern repeat of where I've tried to heal it our human brains are geared to recognize pattern I've been watching a series called cosmos and they've been talking about how even with our early early ancestors it was a survival technique we would watch for the patterns and the seasons and learn when the winter was coming and that trait has remained um, it's <laughs> one of the things we just automatically look for is pattern so avoid patterning avoid muddiness and then move on to the next video to learn about a couple more nifty tools for healing up